is it um is it like do you want songwriting in terms of uh like subject matter or do you want like like just like how the song came because like you know it's kind of right. like I think um kind of I mean I would say like whatever feels most relevant to you guys like I feel like probably track by track it might be that like the inspiration for one song yeah really true. stands okay. out about it for you guys or like lyrics but maybe in another it could be something that you guys came up with like together in terms of music choices does that make sense yeah no totally I just uh yeah I just was Sweet. thinking about that before and yeah that yeah I like I prepped some questions just cool. to like make sure we had somewhat of like a structure but I also obviously wanted to keep it open-ended if you guys like have things that jump out that I don't necessarily have in the questions like obviously I think the most important thing would be you guys talking about whatever feels most important so if it is yeah the songwriting then that's good or if it is whatever else along the way I think that'd be okay cool very yeah. choose your own adventure makes sense Thanks. yeah we're expecting Dan. He's he's skipping. Okay. He's um the not uh interview type. Okay. He, he has a dog. <laughs> that would hold him back. Oh, is yeah. that why he's preoccupied? No, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> he's used right. that as an excuse. That would be more. so nice if that was just like an evergreen excuse. Yeah. Sorry, I have a dog. Um okay. So starting out, um, just like some preliminary questions, I guess, I wanted to just ask about your typical songwriting process, like um, if there are certain members that are behind the lyrics or if, if melody comes first or just like how you guys typically arrive at your songs. Um, so far we have three methods, I think. One of which is I will bring something close to a full song to the rest of the guys and they will help me refine it and finish it. Um, the other method was uh, Dan would, would make an instrumental, pass it on to Mike, and he would add vocals and then the rest of us would also kind of help refine it. And then the newest one is that Mike has been kind of doing what I've, I kind of do, where he will basically start a song on his own and then bring it to, I guess, I, for this album, it was kind of passed to me first. And then uh, we did a little back yeah. and forth. And then from there, yeah, the rest of the guys would help us um, completely finish it. So that's been the three that I, yeah, that's been like our three strategies. Yeah. So far, mm -hmm. For sure. Oh, did you have something to add? No, yeah, I just, I said, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I would say that, um, like, in terms of the songs that Rob really, writes um, like in terms of like his his songwriting on on his songs um that he you know wrote the majority of um in terms of like you know that song is is his um it's like uh i think that he also comes with lyrics like it's always like you know music comes um i think the refinement of the music is uh, uh I think that the subject matter and the song kind of come simultaneously. The only one I think that breaks that would be the one that Dan and I wrote, I think. Mm -hmm. Like in terms of like, I like, you know, when I write a song, I um, try and do kind of lyrics and melody or like I, I'll think of a melody and then like build the music um, with lyrics in mind, I guess. Um, yeah. And then I think, um, so I think that the song, the things that I presented to Rob, um, it was like lyrics were already kind of there. Mm -hmm. And then I think Rob can, can agree that for his songs as well, that he presented to the group, a lot of subject matter or lyrics um, were mostly there as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Cool. Sweet. Yeah. Um, and when did you start working on this album specifically? Like, was that... Do you remember the first song you wrote or like when you guys decided you were going to make a composite project like this? Um, I know that I think since we started, I was always pretty committed to the idea that we would make three EPs first to kind mm -hmm. of just hone understanding how to record and write and arrange stuff. And um, yeah, it kind of felt 
together better than I expected, honestly, when we actually had all the songs in front of us for this and it actually felt like a whole piece. So that, that really worked out. And I think, Mike, you mentioned that you had Useful Now kind of in the works for a little bit. Yeah, because I remember it was like uh, there was an event that happened um, early in the summer of 2019 that um, I just remember it was like a time I got, I was between jobs and uh, it was like, uh, yeah. And so I just remember this one event that um, sparked this. And then I think Rob and I got together recently after that and we went to governor's ball together. And I think that like I had some lyrics or I had a melody and we were in my apartment. And I think I like, I don't know. And then like you also were like, yeah, I've always had this, I don't know. I feel like you always had the idea of having the 11 songs, but then me kind of bringing this to you, I feel like I then also um, was like, yo, I'm, I'm on board with this. And, and you kind of also were like, yeah, like, yeah. I feel yeah. like that, that happened. I don't know if I'm like digging into your subconscious at all, but I know that um, previously, the majority of our output was basically written by me uh, like a yeah person. and uh i and on our third ep like i sang for the first time on a song so i feel like in a way that might have lit a match under mike's ass <laughs> to be like all right i gotta i gotta bring some of my <laughs> own stuff yeah. and say what i want to say kind of thing so i think it was it was really i think it was really cool that at least from me and mike's end like we were both able to like both bring both of our like you know two like different two different completely approach different approaches to it and then combine it for a full album kind of thing so i thought that was um pretty cool yeah for sure um i guess that kind of leads into my first well yeah the first track um useful now so i was curious like obviously I think one of the biggest decisions with ordering an album is what you start out with, um, like what song's going to be the first track. Um, and I think it definitely feels like a choice to have the first track during like, or an album that came out during quarantine be this really kind of party song. Um, what went into deciding that that would be where you guys would start the album? Um, I think it was a combination with the fact that it was like the first song that we wrote for it or finished for it paired with the fact that once we had all the songs together, we had Mike's song useful now. I mean, he also had back home, which was like the last song written for it. And um, so the fact that that first song was written like in a pre COVID time. And then the last one was written like the middle of it. You kind of, it kind of gives you like the whole arc of the like entire transition process into this mm -hmm. whole thing. So um I feel like that was kind of a no-brainer for us to have those two as the bookends for sure. Yeah, and it's it's kind of strange, like um again, like that track, I'll just that was written in particular 2019, like mm -hmm. and that was but I think that some of the feelings that I was going through while I wrote that like became super applicable again then in 2020 when i feel like you know the nation at large uh, or the world at large was experiencing some of those i don't know like um non -sec those lyrics that people might uh relate to um yeah and so i just found that to be really interesting in the sense that um yeah like i, I didn't mean to, like i i had no idea and then um it worked, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, just like it was the first song written, but also um, could express a lot uh, in terms of, you know, the feelings that people mm -hmm. can relate to, to kick it off. And I feel like it was like the, the basically the perfect song where it was like before when we recorded, it was a lot of just like um, go in and record it live, just bang it out really quickly. And then this useful now kind of has that same energy, but a little bit more like detailed mm -hmm. and some little extra elements in there. So it's kind of, it was kind of like, it was, I thought it was like the best song to put out first for sure, because it was like the only, like 
the first one we had. And I guess it kind of just like signaled like here's like the next step in our musical evolution kind of thing where it's like still maintain that fun aspect, but it's like a little bit more matured and developed and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think and the, so, uh, sorry, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was, I was just, just going like, to ask. You, oh, <laughs> Hugo. No, you. <laughs> no, no, no. You go and then okay. I'll ask the follow up. Okay. Okay. okay sorry. No, no, this is this is why we love this is why we love zoom right (laughs) um so i was yeah i was just gonna say like the dance thing that you were saying i think that that just i i can point to um just uh, an event it was like a party and there was just a lot of dance music and Mm -hmm. it was like a fun night that um a lot of validation happened for me and so i just think that um like with my friends and like you know like feeling like uh yeah and so um yeah, I think that that is where maybe that comes from that like, um, let's just kind of have fun, but also this is how I feel um, underneath all those 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 dancing moments. Mm-hmm. That was basically what I was going to ask. So that worked out perfectly was just oh, like cool. why I feel like obviously a lot of it is setting up this scene. Um, and I was just going to ask why that night felt so important to write about, um, yeah. which I feel like you just kind of answered. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I know Butt Craig was inspired by a Lichtenstein painting, right? Yeah. So I mean, my 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 old roommate, um, she had uh, a Lichtenstein print that she got, I think in in either it was it, I think Germany when she went or something, or Paris maybe. Um, but um, yeah, and it just hung on my like by my bathroom, and she also had a second print though that um said uh craig just craig Mm -hmm. um and uh yeah that is why and so i just kind of pieced the two together and tried to to create a story uh around that Mm -hmm. did you use that as like kind of like a writing challenge or was it just a narrative that had developed in your head already like having the paintings Mm -hmm. around I don't know. I kind of, I kind of liked the idea of, um, like, like, like what, what the art, uh, expresses in the sense that it's like, um, this person who is clearly heartbroken by, um, someone that she may have to hurt, but, uh, then she's like, but I'm kind of a badass and like, I need to go like, live my life and there's other hot boys out there that I can switch to <laughs> so it's like I kind of like I don't know it kind of formed naturally and mm-hmm. I was just like I had this idea and I was just like what if I actually like tried to to do this so I think a combination of both maybe it was like an idea that kind of banged around that I thought was like fun and then I was like but what if I actually tried to do that and or like tried to actually write this yeah nice yeah um anything to add from other members about like developing that I guess well I think musically you know I had a rough weird not working musical structure I think it was like totally not correct in terms of chords and then Rob like helped musically at least with that for sure yeah um I think the funny thing about this song and uh Dear John which we'll get into in a second is that like but Craig for me was like oh it's like uh like mike said it's like uh, i approached it like harmonically with like a uh, whimsical fun attitude like like mike said like the character is just like hey, i'm gonna go live my life like i'm gonna kind of put feelings aside and just kind of like embrace um you know uh whatever and then um Dear John basically is like, well, that kind of actually happened to me kind of thing. Right. Um, Yeah, so that was funny. Um, I think that's why I like how they're basically right next to each other. Mm -hmm. And I guess particularly in the first two tracks, you're kind of, they're probably some of the most like fun and upbeat ones. So I feel like those were probably the two most inviting tracks to start Mm -hmm. uh, with. I didn't have, I don't know, musically, I didn't have um, anything else to comment on, except it was fun to write and uh, it's going to be fun to perform for sure. Sweet. So 
um thinking of dear john as like kind of a response track in a way to um but craig like was that a song that you did but craig inspire dear john or was it just that you happened to be writing on one yeah. that um well basically i was in like uh i don't even know how much i should go into this um <laughs> it was a bad breakup okay yeah, but it like wasn't at the it wasn't wasn't at the same time. It was like kind of just like an on and off thing. But like, it basically got to that point where um, the girl that I was seeing was just like, "I'm I'm going to see this other person," and um, and then basically the theme behind the song, "Dear John," itself was basically like saying, um, "Yeah, it was like it it." Uh, was painful at first but then as more time has gone on I've realized well like what was I thinking like this was definitely like for the best for all parties involved kind of thing mm -hmm. so that's kind of what that song is about it's kind of like I'm thanking literally I'm like literally thanking the guy for like you know uh I don't know what the correct phrase would be but basically just saying like Thank you for, you know, it hurt me at first, but I realize now that it's definitely, definitely 110% for the best that things panned out the way that they did, mm -hmm. kind of thing. And um, I mean, obviously, as you know, um, Dear John is like usually referenced kind of in the framing of But Craig, that it's usually a letter from a girlfriend to a boyfriend telling them right. that they're leaving them. So when did you like, I just thought that that was like a really um, clever yeah, reframing well, the of guy's it. Name, the guy's name was actually John. So it, um, nice. It was out well. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, how did you like come to that image though? Like, was that always at the center of the song? Um, that's a good question. I think honestly, I got, I honestly remembered the scene in Dumb and Dumber where, uh, Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels are talking about how uh, one of them got sent a John Deere letter. <laughs> <laughs> the name of it. And um, I didn't actually know that was like a, a, a thing. And then, um, yeah, it just kind of made me think like, okay, I'll write a song that's basically a letter to this guy who like I was so pissed about at first, but really later like he literally did the best thing for me and mm -hmm. everyone else involved so yeah nice that's the story behind that one sweet um man overnight I thought something interesting about this track was like I think on its surface it's clearly like classic up-tempo song like definitely feels I think like a stroke song or something like that um but then the lyrics obviously delve into a little uh, like a much more mature um narrative of basically having to grow up too fast. Um, how did you decide to like, like, I guess that contrast between the tone and the lyrics, like, was that something that was intentional? Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I wrote that song too. Um, that title was based on, well, it was inspired by something my uncle said to me after my dad passed away. Mm -hmm. um, and I think sonically, like musically, I guess I like approached it with the idea that like um, you're like we're like it's like a song that's like basically doing what I was mentioning before where it was just like when we recorded before it was just drums bass guitars and vocals mm -hmm. so it's kind of like uh, the conflict is like we're moving forward but like it's like a retro song at the same time when you're like trying to hold on to that like past I guess so I guess um, I guess that's how like I really like I approached the song. It's like kind of just recon reconciling with having to move forward, but sometimes you're fighting to preserve, you know, what you kind of used to do, mm -hmm. what you used to have, kind of thing. Sweet. Um, and yeah, my next question yeah. was kind of. Oh, sorry. Did were you just about to say something? Yeah, I was, I was just gonna say. I, I just remember. I remember re receiving that song. Um, it was like I was I, I went back uh, to my hometown for a little and I remember receiving that and walking through the park and listening to it. And it was like Rob's demo. And I just remember he like was like, oh, like, yeah, like you're going to you're going to sing this one. 
and I was like, oh, like sweet. And and it was like, it was, yeah, it was like a classic right. BO structure. Um, mm-hmm. And I just remember being like really excited uh, to hit the studio for that one. Yeah. Sweet. Um, and I, Rob, we, I guess, I think it's, oh, oh go, go ahead. ahead. You no, 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 no. I, no, no. We, I think that's why we yeah. put it forth too. And I don't think it was mentioned yet that I think mm-hmm. Useful Now was the first song or was felt like it should be the first song because it didn't sound like anything we did before. Like I, we never had a song that started not with a guitar or drums probably. And Mm -hmm. it was a synthesizer, which is obviously simple, but it was a contrast to what we did prior. And then the first three songs of the album are pretty different than what we had put out before. So that's why I felt like man, man Man overnight felt, uh, felt like it made sense at four because it was the callback to, you know, how we, it it felt more similar. Mm -hmm. to us but yeah if there's yeah so basically it was just i guess the one track on the album where it's just like kind of just doing it the classic blonde daughter way that we used to do but it's also saying goodbye to those days at the same time for sure um sweet uh sorry so walk the walk um this is the weird one yeah, I was going to say, I kind of had trouble coming up with questions for this yeah. one. I think um, it feels like, you know, it's clear from the lyrics, at least from what it felt like to me, that it's kind of asking someone to be mutually vulnerable with you. But I thought the context of it was kind of open-ended. So I wanted to just kind of hear what you guys had to say about it. This one was the one that that was that was probably the, I don't know, Dan like presented um a lot of the music to me and I came up with just a bunch of kind of like hooks I was listening to like a a song that kind of um a lot that had been released that uh kind of just like put a bunch of loops like mini dance loops together and like it ended up being like a really cool pop hooky song and I kind of just like took that idea and then used like the song doesn't really make make much sense but like it's supposed to not I I don't know like I intend like in the sense that it's a bunch of non sequiturs like um about kind of like accountability taking uh make uh, staying accountable for for your words I guess and and um uh and your actions I guess um and just like generally I think that at that time, there was a lot of, I don't know, just like a lot of weird, I don't know, personally, just like, yeah, just like I was going through some weird stuff about like hypocrisy and generally in society and just like maybe I was listening to too much politics and getting too cynical or whatever. I don't know, but like, um, I think that, yeah. So it was like kind of just like directed at like, everybody and everything or like yeah and just like a bunch of non sequiturs and so that's why it kind of is a weird one um but somehow kind of worked I don't know Mm -hmm. did the line oh sorry go ahead go ahead Emma sorry um I was just gonna ask the line don't be comes up a couple times in it I think and I don't know if I was just not listening hard enough but is it ever completed or is it no that's the thing is that like that was just like something that I don't know it kind of felt like I was only I wasn't fully done with the song but then it kind of like I just kind of was like but I kind of like the way that this kind of it's like don't be whatever don't Mm -hmm. be that like don't and make sure that um whatever you are or whatever you claim to be like you you actually follow through with that and you actually like own up to that and and, and hold true mm-hmm. to to that i guess um and like you know write the perfect hook it could le- apply to i don't know like like uh, just like ads like political ads or fucking politicians or um like commercials of like I don't know just like and like I don't know just everything at large that's why it doesn't really make sense but um 
Yeah. <laughs> um, and what were you going to say, Rob? I was just going to add that um, the like, in, like the uh, we have like a transition between Man Overnight and Walk the Walk that's like they go straight into each other. And even though I didn't write the song, like the way that the song speaks to me when you put those two together is like you're kind of like resisting uh, growing up and then walk the walk to me is basically like a song that's just like, well, you're here and you have to do it. So like, just go, go tackle it kind of thing. And, you know, so. Nice. I thought that was uh, pretty cool. Um, yeah. And did it, did it end with a, uh, was that like screaming at the end in the background? Yeah, that's my yeah that was me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We kind of like joked about it. Uh, in the studio and then we just kind of did it mm -hmm. right yeah but i and i like also i just feel like it just it just speaks to like the song itself it's just yeah like, fucking just just do it like just yeah put it all like there give it whatever you got kind of thing for sure a lot um, going on in that song i feel like that was one of the least finished ones too like that one and too much to ask i guess were the ones that were like the least not the least i guess yeah i guess the least finished going into the studio like the mm -hmm. most amount of work was done on the spot mm -hmm. yeah i, I agree with that dan dan maybe wrote like the it was like a verse and a chorus kind of thing mm -hmm. but we didn't have like the second half at all um and then ideas out and then we kind of just cut and paste the best ones together in the best order kind of thing mm -hmm yeah yeah um and signs i i wanted to like start with just it being open-ended because this is obviously a very personal yeah. song um so yeah i just wanted to ask how you started out on that song and and just wherever you wanted to go from there it's actually technically like the oldest song i guess because um it's based on um the first like original like piece of guitar music that I've ever written mm. um I um had like I think I think I've had it since I was like 13 just like the like guitar riffing and I was in like a pop punk band in high school at the time and um I I was just like um I don't know I just never felt like it was like I didn't want to waste it because it felt like so special to me that um, I just held on to it. And um, eventually I was, uh, it just hit me where I, I just thought um, if I'm gonna finish this song and like flesh out this guitar riff, you know, it would be a nice tribute to the guy who like made me start playing in the first place and like got me into music and everything. So mm -hmm. I figured that it was probably pretty appropriate to, um, yeah finish that so it feels good it feels good to actually put it to something that's you know very meaningful and it was like 13 years old like a 13 year old idea so that's crazy um yeah um i can i can add too that i remember mm -hmm. like so through the quarantine like rob was i used to hear him build out all these songs and i used to probably just be doing something else and i would check in and just be like oh yeah that's cool or oh, maybe i don't like this or oh how about this sounds like this whatever but with that song in particular it's you actually i remember you had it rob like it was like a green day song and i remember being so pumped because i liked the chords and it was fast and then i remember when he slowed it down and i was just like oh, and i was like oh come on bro like like this is really I, like, this is, too. I was like i was like this is, i was like this is really slow i'm like i don't know what people are going to do to this and i remember you said i was just like it's actually the same tempo to caroline no off pet sounds which was which changed my whole perspective on us as a band and the album in general it was like it was like oh wow this thing is really taking shape like we're not really just a rock band anymore like uh like this is a this is a piece of work kind of thing because caroline though being like uh for me personally is like a long time pet sounds like homer and loving that stuff like i was like oh shit like that was that was like a big that was a big moment for me personally and that's how i knew like oh, the song was gonna be pretty special I don't remember the Caroline No tempo thing, but I'll take your word yeah, for it. I forget that kind of stuff. Um, I was curious too, 
with this one, what it was like starting from that solo songwriting experience and bringing it together as a band. Um, like, I guess on the musical side or even emotional too, just what that was like um, working on it together. Um, we didn't really. Yeah, I, I can be pretty bad about that sometimes where like, I, I, I have a kind of a, I, I have a habit of just like, I wanna at least present the song as finished as possible in my mind <laughs> to the guys. And then I would say like, well, if you guys have any ideas from here, like. I'm open to them and you know sometimes we actually like like we do add those ideas and stuff and um with this one it was nothing like we didn't even see recording i mean steve came after work like we had no footprint in it i remember that, being there i think yeah. i was there a little earlier and i just yeah. remember it just like was like um yeah like i i, I don't know in the sense that Rob is set, like act like like making it seem like that's like a bad thing, um, I was at least very happy to see him work so hard, uh, specifically at this song, to arrive at something that uh, yeah could mean could mean a lot. So I think mm -hmm. that uh, being there in the studio it, like it was kind of like a no brainer, even if if I was just kind of yeah. mostly there yeah, for I mean, support I was, yeah, um I had no like, idea like a producer would be sorry um no no yeah continue no i was gonna say it was um super grateful that the four guys were just you know yeah absolutely like let's have this song on there kind of thing mm -hmm. um, that means a lot yeah i was i liked the placement of it especially that i feel like it I listened to the album like this morning just like the whole way through and it definitely is like an outlier I think it comes kind of out of the blue and the tempo and tone of it but it feels like very central to the whole album um which yeah, is it, 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 like preceding it was just like that scream right right and so then it goes and then it's very and then but yeah like it, it uh I think it really works I think you're absolutely right yeah, if it was supposed to be printed on vinyl, the whole point was that'd be the last song on the first side, and then you flip it, right. and it would, not, we wouldn't have the money to make a recording of mm -hmm. the vinyl, but uh, nor did you want to spend the money. But uh, yeah, that was the point. Then you turn it over, and then you would get like the next song that was totally out there, being too much to ask. Sweet. I think we're a little divided on the even Dan can chime in, but as far as what side when side two begins, a little divided. But that's for another day. <laughs> Would it, uh, would it not have started there? I mean, those are the first six, and then you got five after that. You think Space Cadet through Back Home would be a good side two? Yeah, Space Cadet through uh, Back Home would be a side two for him. And I, I kind of almost agree with him, but I don't know. We'll, have to, we'll see. No, I don't know if I agree um, with that. What was I going to add? Yeah, no, I, I, I disagree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty strong. There. I just feel like those two songs are <laughs> those two songs are also connected signs and too much to ask for sure thematically. Yeah. But um the other thing that I was gonna add was that um I do really like how signs is in the like middle of it because I feel like the uh the whole overarching theme of this whole thing is kind of just like there's so many things that if they like serious things that if they didn't happen, we wouldn't have these songs in the first place. Um, so I think that's really um, like an interesting like uh, conflict to deal with like a lot of shitty things that you wish didn't happen but we got all these you know resonating songs out of it I guess from our perspective or people who've reached out to us and said they liked it so mm -hmm. yeah I mean like I can even um, I remember I was I was gonna I, I forgot um, I was gonna say something along the lines of that but like in the sense that yeah like I think on this album for me for Rob for any but everybody um at least I I think I mean like for me personally also just like it kind of validated songwriting as an expressive outlet for me really mm -hmm. a lot um yeah I think that like I don't know before I kind of felt like I was poo-pooing around with like songwriting and like you know like and eh, like and then this um I think there was a lot of uh 
yeah, val- validation that came with presenting a lot of these ideas that came from like, you know, like either wh- whether it be a creative place or a personal place or an emotional place or whatever, um, presenting that to the group and, and, and having people that be receptive to it um, was, was pretty big for me to like, at least continue um, and say like, like trust, trust in yourself, like trust in these, in these choices, trust in this, trust in this expression. That's kind of where, um, a good product like comes from, I don't know um, mm-hmm. if that makes sense, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's at least how I felt like that reminded me what Rob was saying. Um, yeah. Sweet. Um, too much to ask. So you had said that you felt like it was related to science. Yeah. Just in the sense that, um, for me, science, well, me and Mike wrote too much to ask together in like one night session but I guess thematically like I don't really believe in like signs too much like you know from you know beyond the grave kind of thing Mm -hmm. but I mean there are you do come across like a lot of weird things in life where you feel like things are almost like scripted Mm -hmm. and um so signs is kind of like the I'm like a believer in that kind of stuff whereas like on the flip side too much to ask is kind of like a lot of like doubting and thinking like everything's just kind of stupid coincidences it's really there's really nothing's really right. meaningful or connected at all kind of thing mm-hmm. um, it's like is there i don't know is it like um is does it like does serendipity actually exist like like is it too much to yeah like to feel like uh yeah like, you're like the, yeah, like do those do those moments of like oh like that's a sign or like yeah exactly like is that yeah like there are moments when you feel like you're the center of the universe right. or like you're in this like scripted show that mm-hmm. is your life, but you know the song too much to ask is basically like kind of grappling with that feeling where you're like logically acknowledging how ridiculous that is, but yet you're also acknowledging that like there are a lot of weird coincidental things that are like so personally meaningful and like the odds of things occurring and right and it's like why why shouldn't I feel that way yeah. in that moment um you know yeah definitely that's interesting to have them yeah next to each other um and kind of having that contradiction within two tracks I had thought on the first listen that it was kind of related to um LATM but that makes more sense now it kind of from what you're describing reminds me of Chinese satellite from Phoebe Bridgers in a way. Cool. Um, sweet. I think that, I think that for sure. Um, a lot of people on first and, and who's to say that that's not, that's not correct in the sense that like it, for, um, in terms of like relationships, mm-hmm. um, too much to ask for me to feel that way. I think that like that applies to that too, in the sense that it's like, um, yeah, I don't very- know. Like sometimes something that's so hard to say or like how you truly feel in a relationship and maybe you shouldn't say that because it might hurt their feelings but it's Mm -hmm. like no it's like maybe I do feel that way um and you can kind of just like amplify that into the kind of like universal existence scale um and then you kind of arrive at um the other meaning you know um the other cool fact that I want to mention is that me and Mike wrote this too much to ask in a period from 11 p.m to 5 a.m in one night (laughs) yeah um the writing process was quick but um the mixing and recording of it mm-hmm. was a, kind of a a chore but um am i there, wrong sorry i was just gonna ask were there birds in the recording i thought yeah i wrote that um, down okay that's like kind of a mix of an inside joke with steve's friends from home paired with the fact that since it was five in the morning we actually did hear birds chirping by the time we finished like working on this song like in a marathon session mm-hmm. um yeah i don't know if steve wants to give any background yeah, to, it's uh, just like uh if you're out too late yeah. you realize you're out too late when you hear that the birds are chirping okay <laughs> <laughs> phrase that they use but um yeah i got i think i was like around the same time i was in a park or something I just collected some field recordings and we just stuck it stuck it on the end there nice 
Yeah. Um, I feel like I feel like Matt. Uh, didn't you like lay down like the? Mm, 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 we were all mm, before before mm, we were fucking around before, right? We were all fucking around for like yeah at least an hour, but like I don't really know what out of that. Like I just remember we were fucking around with like bass lines and drums. We were all just like yeah. passing around the laptop, and then we left. Or yeah, and, and then left. and then like like some some stuff stuck other stuff didn't but i think that that bass that bass uh 808 thing that bass kick drum like comes from from pre 11 to to 5 a.m yeah so i guess maybe. We, had the, we had the rhythm of it maybe yeah but, um, because i remember you adding like fucking around with that piano like like that uh piano riff for a while getting those go those like chords right yeah yeah when we arrived back, yeah, we went to some bar in Red Hook. <laughs> Either way, from the point in which anything. in which like that rhythm and that bass line was laid down, maybe to like, um, oh yeah, to the chords that uh, from eleven a.m. to five a.m. We we went drinking in Red Hook and it was fun. But like then <laughs> we came right. back and we were like, we have to work, Rob, and we were just like, <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. also <laughs> we're on one that night. Um, yeah. It was- it was also really weird night too. We're on substances, it, like you know, alcohol, yeah. other things. Who knows? Just it was also of- really, yeah, yeah. It was also really weird too because it was like right at like the time where it was like questionable, kind of questionable to be like going out. It was like not questionable, but it was like the city was starting to get empty. Mm-hmm. It was Valentine's and- Day weekend, I think, right? Yeah, it was, like, weekend. it was like uh, Martin Luther King Day was that Monday. Yeah. of 2020 yeah or, i think yeah. it was the weekend after gotcha. i think it was the weekend after we played knitting no it was the same weekend it was the day after we played knitting. i know that uh, yeah yeah i know that was because... knitting on a was knitting was on a on a friday night yeah then? we on played on the day after okay yeah. we did it on saturday yeah right and right uh, because sunday we would need like i, I wouldn't uh, yeah monday i needed to recover as well yeah, so exactly like, yeah yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I, you know i know when it was it's 5 a.m. Me and Mike were uh, literally about to look for show times for uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like 6 a.m. <laughs> we're like, all right, what do we do now? I'm like, uh, we can go. That's so funny. And yeah. then and then my roommate came down because he worked a, like a, a, a gym shift early in the morning. And he was like, mm-hmm. you guys are still up? Like, you guys are still down here? Like when That's you came so in funny. Room, yeah. yeah, so. And I walked That's in the door. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and then Matt's yeah, and then Matt Matt came and we got bagels. It was a really weird night. Like even in Red Hook, like at that time, it just felt like really empty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very Red Hook bizarre. Is the tr- is yeah, been, effect. Yeah, I had been to Red Hook before, but that that night in Red Hook felt extra weird. I don't know if I've been out there at all. It's so weird. It feels like, like sometimes out. like Main Street of like Disney World. You're like, yeah. Why oh, does I get what exist? you mean. It's so yeah. weird. It's like a fake place, like a fake town. Right. That's how I feel about Bronxville sometimes. That so true. Like yes. Yeah. That like, that like right off the, there's that diner and the freaking movie yes. theater. And you're like, yeah. this is straight out of like right. the 70s. Like this could fall over if you pushed it hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> um. Sweet space cadet. Um, sorry, one second. I'm just looking at the time. Um, oh, oh no, I don't have any. I mean, I know you guys probably have stuff to get to, but I'm not in a super time crunch or anything. Um, I think that. What do you say? We'll go. I think. I think that like yeah. I don't. Know. Either way, let's just continue. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> um. So. Obviously, the central idea here is kind of taking the space cadet phrase and turning it on its head at the end, how it um, is used in its typical context at first and then starts being used in that more, um, what am I trying to say, space travel way. Um, How did that come up, I guess, first and foremost? Um, I think that... um... Yeah, like the the idea of being a space cadet uh, for me personally was always kind of like a you know spaced out um, mm-hmm. type of person. Um, but I think that uh, the song kind of the imagery, like yeah, at the end, um, is is actually inter intergalactic. Let's say maybe, but um, then 
I think that those themes though are the same kind of like apply to the to the previous idea still where it's like okay I'm spacing out but like sometimes I'm not just spacing out like like don't take it personally sometimes and it's like I'm sorry and it's like I'll be back soon don't worry like it's like um um sometimes I'm even thinking about about you sometimes I'm even thinking about like you know our relationship or whoever you know um um go like you know kind of just yeah that's kind of the idea of like me thinking about or like I don't know introspective moments or um yeah those moments of um reflection maybe Mm -hmm. um where it feels like I'm just kind of like maybe it's like a monkey going on in my head but it's actually not like it's sometimes Mm -hmm. really meaningful and that's kind of like uh the imagery at the end where it's like just wait for me like I'll be back I'm blasting off to space like whoa like I'm spacing out but don't worry like I I promise I'll be back kind of thing gotcha um anything to add from uh, not much other than I guess I think that to... song structure wise it was not really like they everybody else was very they helped a lot in terms of developing the song structure for sure right mm-hmm. yeah I mean if, I remember you you had your you had a, like a version like with useful now and Buck Craig where it's like vocals and then kind of just some percussion and keyboard tracks and you sent that to me and Dan, and we came back with completely like different versions. Yeah. Um, Dan's was like a like a more serious like electronic kind of approach, and then mine, which I guess we all collectively pursued, was like a more like fun and whimsical kind of thing. Although I feel like towards the end with that, uh... I think the chorus really like um, at least for me, I. I... I think that that like that like you know um, I'm just a space kid like you know Spain and that like h- the hard kind of rock guitar mm-hmm. like Weezer kind of um, that Weezer kind of guitar that wasn't really like I don't know if necessarily that was that was my idea um, I think remember, that, that remember, I remember you pushed back because remember you sent it to us and I remember going to Rob's <laughs> room it was like I was like yeah we gotta weasel the fuck out of this and then Robert <laughs> Rob like laid something down like that and you're like yeah this is not what I was going for but it works like that's the thing is that like yeah. the ending also wouldn't work if we didn't kind of give it a taste of that during that that was that, that was that was Dan and that day in the exactly summer, and that's what like, I'm saying is that I think that like, Dan... uh, let's you know let's make this green day and then that's, that's what the ending is exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I think that w- that's what I mean is when I say like they were very instrumental in in forming the song structure and like what it really came it's to Dan- be. It's like Dan threw in that like you know like Blink One Eighty Two shit almost at the end. Like um, we knew, uh, yeah, I think we knew because you had that other hook for the outro. We didn't know how to do it, and then Dan almost like sarcastically was like, "Yeah, we should do the key." Change. Like ironically, yeah, totally. And I was like, "No." And then key we did change, the key, man. And then. Yeah, then Rob is like, oh, we probably should do the key change and and it worked out. That's why yeah. the it sounds like that. Yeah. Nice. So that was that was fun. That song excites me because it um yeah. It's it really just feels like kind of everybody threw kind of everything together and it like yeah. Yeah, I think that mm-hmm. was like probably the most collaborative one, I think. Sure. Interesting. Um sweet okay so then what do you do you guys call this l-e-t-m do you call it i-l-y t-m i call it i-l-y nice i don't yeah um i don't say the parentheses yeah 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 Yeah. could be trademark if if you don't do autocorrect Uh, um someone someone assumed that it was trademark recently they were like that's the title of that song is so fucking funny (laughs) why (laughs) but i guess they thought it was trademark Trademark, the (laughs) text phrase i'll find yeah i guess that's what they thought yeah <laughs> um did the title did that come after writing it that you decided you were going to spell it like that um, or was it drawn yeah from? I, I pretty much basically i didn't really know what else to call it other than uh I can i be right back i'm just gonna like, go to the bathroom oh for sure yeah, go take your pee pee um <laughs> i felt like a long title like that was just way too uh generic and uh i don't know so many love songs already written um and i don't know that lowercase 
text message like thing just kind of made the most sense i guess mm -hmm. um, and um i mean this seems to me like the most lo-fi track um how did you come up or how did you decide that that would be kind of the sound aesthetic of it um i think i think instrumentally i feel like it sounds i don't think it was it sounds lo-fi but i think maybe you're maybe the vocal effect i guess kind of gives it the yeah lo -fi. that's probably what i'm thinking of but um yeah that was pretty much inspired by like 808s and heartbreaks like Kanye West type of thing that I was going for there. Um, put on the auto tune on it a little bit. Because mm -hmm. um, uh, I think it was, it was probably like in the Pitchfork review or someone talking about that album and just how like uh, the auto tune kind of like almost gives you like the sense of like a person that's basically so hurt that they're like devoid of emotion kind of thing mm -hmm. um and that song was inspired similar similarly by the dear john experience but um as i finished it i guess i kind of look at it as more uh as like a song that's like in any kind of relationship whether it's like familial romantic or platonic um the more you care about someone, uh, the more like it hurts when they're gone kind of thing is kind of just the, the main theme of that song. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess it's kind of basically just about like trying, uh, it's like when you're towing that line where you're like afraid to develop like a strong relationship with anyone because, you know, like inevitably it's going to end at some point. So. Mm -hmm for sure. Um, anything that anyone wants to add on that one? Cool guitar solos. It shreds. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now that you say that, I'm like, maybe it definitely wasn't lo-fi. I was totally thinking of the vocals. Yeah, no, um, no, it definitely gives you that perception, which is, I think, yeah, kind of what we're, we were going for too. Right. I think that the guitars, I would say, are, are lo-fi to a certain extent. I would also say that the guitars are like probably the best guitar performance on the album in terms of like in, in, in terms of in like, like arrangement and playing like I don't know the, way the, the tone the of them just, though coming on like yeah. the wah, 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 it's very like I was, almost sounds like it's being played through like no a, but even even outside that lead part the way that Steven does the downstrokes is very like George Harrison to me in on like white oh for sure yeah the chords, like, it's very Lennon to me that's but it's also like that's why it's interesting because it's like has the Kanye West kind of auto tune, but it's also kind of feels like mm -hmm. you already kind of heard this song before, like from somewhere else. And to me, it feels like the White Album, but it could feel like a, a lot of different songs. That's how that's how it felt. To me. True, reminds me of two things. Um, the, this was definitely a song that I remember Matt asking me to speed up for sure. Um, and uh, the other, thing I know it was signs. I don't but, know about this one. I know it was. I know it was signs. I don't no, know. Because I remember one. you would sing to me so often the chorus of this song at like an up tempo and like try to get me to like. Cause I, I remember yeah. that so well. Uh, yeah. that, I'm just like chill out, chill out. It's gonna, it'll fit nicely. And uh, yeah, the other thing I just wanted to add was, um, I in retrospect, I think, uh, Dear John was definitely my Paul McCartney stab, and IOI was definitely my John Lennon. Uh, stab like musically I guess um, in terms of like chord progressions that they like to employ in their mm -hmm. songs so I didn't realize that till I guess a lot later but kind of a cool thing there also I don't, I don't think this was intentional but like he said the vocals are kind of like Kanye hate like 808 and heartbreaks I always thought that that guitar solo like the first guitar freeze was like very uh Mike Dean, who does all the guitar solos on the Kanye West albums on like My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy and mm -hmm. afterwards. Yeah, they got that squeaky um, clean, almost synth like sound. Yeah, like a vocoder, yeah. like it's like a, yeah, like a, I don't know, I don't even know how to yeah, describe so it. Yeah, so I definitely did not consciously think of that, but I definitely hear it now. So that's, that's pretty cool. Thank you, Kanye. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool, Kanye. Thank you. Um, sweet. Okay expectations um sorry i've been writing down the timestamps just so i know where to go back to um 
I didn't have, I kind of, I was trying to just like jot stuff down for this one. I didn't have specific questions, I guess. Um, the one thing I guess that jumped out to me right away was it feels very Beach Boys, but then um, a lot of that recurring image is trying to run away from the sun and wanting summer to end. And it felt very, um, I don't know, unexpected to me. Um, was that like, were you drawing inspiration from the Beach Boys or like that kind of summary feel to contradict I that? A, I think it's a shameless Beach Boys rip ripoff. I think yeah. it's supposed to be that. Yeah. Um, that's also, that was also a very old song. I pretty much built that off of a shelved version of Ghost. Um, and what did I want to add from for that? Um, yeah, I had like very bare bones stuff for a really long time. Um, and yeah, pretty blatant Beach Boys ripoff, but also like, I guess a lot of the themes that they talked about like on their later work where it's like, uh, like more spiritual and finding purpose kind of things and kind of similar to Men Overnight, like trying to run away from, you know, inevitable problems that you're going to face. Um, um, I don't really know. I just, uh, it felt like a great penultimate song because it's like, you know, a big like orchestrated, like a lot of things going on. And then- Yeah, like, so many moving parts in that song. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, really. That took like a whole day in the studio. Yeah. Yeah. In and of itself. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah. How did you decide to end it the way that you did, where it really kind of comes up into this um ensemble, like you said? Um, you mean like the, the end of the song? Yeah. I mean, from my notes, if yeah. I'm remembering correctly, it really kind of picks up at the end. Um yeah, so it like uh changes the um the time signature into like a three, four, like waltz kind of thing. And Caitlin, this, a friend of ours who recorded a uh, keyboard and piano on it, um, helped us out on it. Um, I added that coda there because I had like probably three or four different versions of the song itself where the whole song was in that rhythm. Mm -hmm. And um, I also really, I, I know like a lot of the Beach Boys music is, has like that three, four waltz kind of rhythm to it. So um, I don't know, I felt like it was just a cool, a cool coda to have, honestly. Um, yeah, that song, the whole song itself, I don't know if I completely really know where it came from yet. It definitely was definitely a uh, love letter to the Beach Boys for sure because um, uh, a lot of any any time I'm having like you know personal strife um, I put pet sounds on and it kind of takes me out of it for a little bit so um, yeah that song is kind of just a like an like an uh, I don't know I, I, I hope it doesn't just come off as like a rip off and more still as just an homage kind of thing just to mm -hmm. say, like appreciate you know what Brian and the and the guys have done for me, and yeah, um, in homage, yeah, for sure, yeah. not a rip off. You thank you, and um, yeah, the only thing I would add is that it sounds like a great uh, penultimate track, or it's like so big and everything, and you know, I think like back home is just like almost like a great like epilogue mm -hmm. track kind of thing to follow it up. So um, for sure. It also felt like a great pair next to each other. Mm -hmm. um, sweet. So getting into the final track back yeah. home. Um, I mean, starting off, where where is this referencing as home? Um, <clears throat> uh, Brooklyn, for me, it was my apartment. So it was like, yeah, it was like me going out of the city to go to New Jersey, not thinking much of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just like, oh, like, you know, right now it might be smarter to just be like, be with my family, like, and see, you know, and then uh, um, that turned into like a while. And so um, I also, yeah, I was with a lot of loved ones 
um, during that period. And then it was like a while and I stopped back into the apartment for the first time in a while. And it was like, bread was still in the cupboard. Um, yeah. And it was just like, yeah, it was, it was, it was intense kind of. And then I remember like, I, it was basically like a cleanup for me. It was like getting all that shit. Like I remember walking in and like the smell, like it was like, oh, wow, things are definitely not like rotting in here. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it was like, yeah. And so I, I went, you know, and then I remember like feeling all these things. And then, um, I came, you know, I just remember thinking like, I should just like put this down, like, just like put like, you know, a little work into this, um, get on your computer, like, um, yeah. And so it was just that, uh, those feelings, um, at least kind of the first verse is, is, is very much, you know, expressive of, of, of that very directly. And then the second verse, I think is much more like, um, ideas of just, uh, yeah, like we're kind of doing the same shit different day. I don't know. Um, but it's okay. Cause it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay though. It's like, um, it's kind of comforting the fact that it's, um, that things change, but like, you know, like the empire still, empire state building is still, is still there. And like, uh, those, you know, um, when you look off your balcony, you can still see the same beauty that you did even, uh, through those, you know, through those things, despite those things, uh, et cetera. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah, I know in the first verse you referenced like very specifically that you were gone for 12 weeks. Um, and obviously if that's for personal reasons, you don't want to talk about, we don't have to get into specifics of anything, but I was just curious what that time period meant to you that, I mean, I know time had passed and that was part of the significance, but, um, was there something that made coming back to Brooklyn like hyper significant in that way? So I think what happened was I went, <clears throat> I went back home to New Jersey and then I went, I saw, uh, yeah, I like went away and then to see someone and then I came back to Brooklyn and, and yeah, and then like that was, it was just more like I, the uncertainty of everything. Mm -hmm. I remember um, my two roommates were leaving. Um, they went back home as well, or like to California. I'm not even sure. One of them went to California and then like, I was like, I don't want to be here alone. Um, it's, 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 it's weird right now. Mm -hmm. And then I also remember, but then coming back, like I remember the feelings, it was like, it's, we're all in this together in the sense that it's also like, don't, I should never have, um, I don't know, there was a much more certainty at that point, I think, I think is what I'm trying to say in the sense that everything felt very up in the air for those, for those 12 weeks, I think, um, a lot of people were figuring out like, what the fuck was even going on, like, 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 what is proper, behavior um and so I think that that was very scary for for me personally mm -hmm. um and so I think that I I definitely retreated to a, a place of comfort um and so then coming back it was very much like after those 12 weeks the reason why I specifically referenced those 12 weeks I guess was because it was like yeah like now it feels a bit more certain now we feel like we can kind of get through this together um mm -hmm. yeah and like always yeah always feels yeah like other other lyrics um my ideas kind of a theme that I kind of said like is like taking the personal but also making sure that it can be universal mm -hmm. um and so like I think that you know I don't like to I don't know it's like like certain lyrics I don't want to say like no it, it, it applies to to this and and not to this or like me personally to this because like the idea is kind of like I want it to be very universal as well definitely um yeah and I think it's so clear why it stands as like an epilogue for this whole project um so I was just curious also for other members like on that note of being universal like 
what the significance is to um, you guys as well in terms of it being the last track on the Save You album? I don't know. It's, uh, uh, I just thought it sounded like it made sense. Like it just, mm -hmm. I don't know. It felt, it felt very naturally like the last song to me. Mm -hmm. Even like before it, I don't even know. I think it just speaks to like, um, cause useful now is like very like live band kind of. And back home is just, I mean, at least for the first, you know, three, uh, like three quarters of it, it's just Mike and his, um, Beeps and boops. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, thing I want to actually just highlight that I'm thinking now is that I think it's pretty lyrically, I, I really do love how Mike uh, paints a picture mm -hmm. in his lyrics a lot. Whereas my lyric writing approach is just like, this is how I'm feeling. I'm not really going to be ambiguous, or not that he's ambiguous about it, but he really, uh, really paints a scene where I'm just like, this is how I'm feeling. I'm just telling you, like, straight up how I'm feeling, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, the other cool thing that I love about this song is that it's just built on two chords. Where um, musically, I'm, I have, I just have a tendency to just, I don't know, pack a lot of interesting musical ideas, I guess, to me and i so i think it's awesome that mike can build such a great track just on like just two chords for the like the whole thing and it doesn't get like boring and he builds it up and stuff so i think we do have some cool differences for sure yeah for sure yeah i really liked the image of returning i think you mentioned it a few times like the place up on the roof um and like you said yeah i think that's like a scene that even though it was very specific for you, probably like could be that place of solace for whoever. Right. Um, yeah. Sweet. Uh, I guess, yeah, I wanna check if you guys have any other things you wanna add, but also if anyone needs to run out. I know we've run a bit over, but. I think I exhausted everything, but this was, this is a great opportunity to share like what went into this, I'm gonna be, really grateful to have this like x years from now for sure so, Sweet. yeah you. this was it was a lot of fun just to hear your process behind all of it so yeah i think that i think that despite um am i like am i like loud or am I quiet oh there we go um i think that despite like it seeming like rob and I, I maybe did the talking like yeah like everybody else is so instrumental and huge mm -hmm. in these songs actually like li as steve said i i i like personally like going into the studio with a song that was like not fully fleshed or like i don't know i, I was just very scared and very anxious and very like like doubting um how that might pan out mm -hmm. and, and i and i think that I like now looking back, it's like, you know, it never would have been that good if I didn't have that only 70, you know what I mean? Like without that collaboration, I think that the product would not have been as good. Mm -hmm. um, sure. They they helped, everybody helped everybody, I think a lot. Yeah. It sorry. kind of felt different. I'm sorry, go, go ahead, Robert. I kind of just, uh, you know, it's kind of funny that you guys were kind of nervous when it came out because I remember hearing the songs and maybe I'm biased or I could just be wrong, but I remember feeling like, oh, wow, these are really great songs. And for me personally, the playing drums, I'm like, it's really a lot easier to play the drums when the songs are good. So to me, there was like multiple instances where like, this is just so easy to do. Like, that's how I felt the songs were good. And then for the stuff that was open-ended, like Mike was saying, like, uh, Oh, like I don't know how this is gonna sound. I never there was that never really had any doubt that it was not gonna come out cool. And some of the open ended stuff were some like really good times in the studio. And then and when I kind of think about it too, like when we were doing it, like it kind of felt like a drag sometimes. Um, but then you look, I look back at it now, and it's like uh, probably like the best times I had in 2020. Easy, even though if they're like really long days where we'd spend like 25 hours in the studio at least on a weekend. But it was like. Uh, definitely awesome like i think a lot of the emotions that we were feeling at the times of each song are reflected like what craig was a lot of fun and i think it sounds fun and i think that 
like signs was definitely like a heavy session when we all showed up and you can it's reflected in the sound and I think back home is like big and like epic and like well like that was that was like one of the last songs I think that our emotions are reflected in the songs like how we felt in the studio too and I think that's what kind of makes it like a really holistic project and I think it's why it's a I personally think it's a good piece of art same um I yeah I mean, oh go ahead can I can I just say like I don't know the other day well with the release of the album I don't know we, we like we like had this music for so long like in the sense that we had some songs for so long we've been essentially like like a whole year I don't know it's weird for me to say that songwriting of this album started two years ago like I, I almost can't can't believe that um or almost two years ago now like it's like I don't know um it 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 just feels like a whole, like yeah like those months were deleted from everybody's I don't know just time doesn't really make sense to me um and so uh it it was just amazing to 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 work on it and 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 pick at it and like and and you know harp over every little detail and like I was afraid about how like it might be interpreted because it's kind of eclectic sounding and like how can we how can we make this like make sense like that was like my biggest concern was like how can we make these songs all make sense and like they kind of just did in the sense of the th like the themes um and Balance because because of... we kind of lived it together yeah like it um it worked and then and then for it to be a final product on release day it was just so strange not strange but like i don't know validating that that latent validation or that latent uh gratification where it's like oh like all of those thoughts and all of those choices and all that little like we did that together and we like i don't know it was just very much like all of those choices was de were developed by us and it's just was so crazy to for, for me to think that this came out of nothing and mm -hmm. if we didn't um yeah i don't know music i guess <laughs> Um, yeah, the only thing I would add is that I think it was it was crazy to have all the songs and be like, wow, there's like a good balance of like the stuff that we used to do is still here. Mm -hmm. And then there's other parts of it where it's pushing the envelope and it wasn't just an entire thing of either or like it felt feels strangely like very natural and um, yeah, it just makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's weird how things I, I, and we were lucky to have Ricky and Karen too, who Steven yeah. is friends with at Fordham. They're older than us. The guys run the studio. They, I mean, too. they uh, they gave us a lot of like independence and like freedom, um, but also mm -hmm. kind of I don't know, like they're I don't know, they're just just very cool people. So and they're really good at what they do. So they let us. They helped us flesh out our ideas a lot. So yeah. I guess aside from you know um, you know Matt coming up with all of his drum parts, I think like incredibly instrumental for. Dan and Steve to do, you know, basically I don't really have a lot of technical know-how and like guitar tones and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. they really came through with like, you know, getting the tones and the sounds right for the songs themselves. So it's, um, we got a great crew. We got, what can I say? For sure. Um, sweet. Well, thanks guys. I'm super excited to uh, get this on paper and I'll um, keep you posted on yeah, I think I'd probably be able to be done with it this week, but um, yeah, either way, this was super fun. Thanks. Sweet. Thank you. Thanks, Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. No, it was, rambling is always helpful. I mean, not to say that you did, but it's the best yeah, way to get horrible. some good bits to pick out. Um, Were you in the Ramblers at Fordham? Shut up. <laughs> Were you, weren't you though? I was. Wow. <laughs> that's not surprising i acted shocked but that makes perfect sense such a rambler um, in a good way not in a bad way um sweet well right. yeah awesome thanks Thank for your you. time guys good to see you, you. Thanks, good, to see you. Yeah, good to see you bye